How's it going everyone? This is Wenbo. I'm back to the YouTube. It's been a couple weeks I'm off here just because I was busy working. I apologize for that. And uh, thank you so much for all of you. I just hit the 10K subscribers a couple of days ago on this YouTube channel. It's an incredible journey for me so far. I cannot believe that it's only over a year that all the amount of works that I put it in you guys support it and that you guys love it. I'm so grateful that I had this lucky opportunity to have my own audience and to share what I do and also reaching to more creatives to do what I love. Again, I'm so thankful and thank you so much for your support. Let's jump into the Blender, get our tutorial started today. We'll actually start this tutorial inside Photoshop. And I want to show you an image that we are going to use in this tutorials. But before that, I need to process this JPEG file and into a PNG file. Basically, what is the PNG file specialized is to having some transparent areas that you can use. So now you can see here we have a color ink in here. If I'm actually going to using pen tool or any mask tool to get the thing cut off from the white background, this is what it going to looks like. Okay. So once I did that, we have a layer mask on. You can see here we have some gray and the white squares in the back. That means in this area, there's no pixel or there's no any image content in this area. So this is what we want. And we want to save this type of image as a PNG file. And then we can transfer this image into the Blender to use that. And I will show you some tricks that how to use this special PNG file inside Blender. What you're gonna do next, you're gonna select this layer, go to the right side and uh, save as a PNG file. And save as a PNG file. Now, as you can see here, all these, there's no pixels in here, okay? So export and then we'll be able to use inside Blender. So now let's go back to the Blender and get started. And I prepared three examples for this tutorial. The very first one, which is very easy one and very common one is why doing labels. So as you can see here, we have some text in here. If I'm zooming in, you can see here, we have some really nice shadow as well. So how do things work? A lot of people, when they doing labels, they feel like they need to having certain size, making sure the proportion and everything is correct. And uh, it just takes forever to do that. So what I have found, I'm actually just duplicated part of these bottle uh, geometries and pulled it out and having an actual separate label out here, outside. And uh, you can see here, if I move it, that's how simple it is. I know a lot of people think, well, why don't you just do the, the UV Mac on this actual bottle on this body and in order to getting that texture done. It can be done, of course, but it will be taking longer to getting the similar result like this. So for me, I just kind of cheat a little bit. I'm just using a plane and do this. And when you see this, and this is the image texture knows what's happening. Basically, it's just a PNG image file and kind of hook into the base color and also the alpha. And to be honest, you don't have to really hook in the base color because for the PNG file we are, we are actually using is, and I'm going to the UV editing tab. You can see here, this is the, the PNG file is just a simple text with some transparent background, just like what I show you, nothing fancy. Once you UV unwrap this areas, you can easily position where this label wanna go and that you can do that. And if we we'll go back to the shading tab, if I unhook the color, basically you see, we can change the color of this text. And how do things work now? Because this is a PNG file and uh, we are linking the alpha, it basically works like a mask. So what you can do here, the basic principle, BSDF as the fundamental ones, you can just change the color as you need it. I think this is really cool and very useful to use. This is the very first trick that I want to show you how to use a simple PNG file to creating a label you want to use for your product render. Okay, that's the tip number one. All right, here's the example number two, and I'm using a PNG image texture as a prop. As you can see here, these are the scenes I'm actually having here. The bottles, everything has been built in the CG as an actual 3D model. 
but the image PNG image textures using as a background as a plane it, it can be perfectly blended in to what I want to achieve inside Blender if you had any experience working with stimulations inside of Blender I'm telling you it takes ages to get what you want and also the settings everything is take forever to figure out so I'm just putting my photographer or retoucher my set to think about oh, well, how can I solve this as a uh, creative so I just using a PNG image textures in the in the background as you can see here this is what I've done and about but I did a little bit of adjustment on this PNG file but before you actually doing this one thing is you need to enable add-on is called import background image as a plane so you go to the edit preferences you're gonna go here add-on go to here tap import image texture yeah import images as a plane so making sure you enable this this is a built-in add-on uh, you just need to enable that so next what you can do here you can do shift a to adding a image and then you can see we have another option this is called image as a plane once click that and then find your png image texture and now you can see here this is the image texture we're going to use click that and uh, import image as a plane and now you can see here we have something added in here if i hit s to scale it up you will see this is what's happening here However, this colors and the brightness looks a little bit different compared to what I have in the scene simply because I did a little bit adjustment at the same times. And the good thing about this add-on is automatically creating a shading nodes for you. So you can see here they're using a principal BSDF and we plug in the color and alpha into this. So you can ready to use. One thing I like this about it is because it actually has some shader and some textures in this image. So it will react with the light you know, accordingly, which is really convenient for compositing and when you're having a lighting in the scene. So you're putting your props and in the scene, easily you can making sure the color and the brightness working correctly. So what I have done here, I didn't use this default setting, I hit H to hide it. What I've done here in the shading tab is like this. The note editor is working like this. And you can see here, this part looks exactly like the default setting. What I've done here, I'm only adding a mixed shader and the other shader is wide open, didn't hook anything. It just means it's going to be black. And now I just adding a gradient texture as a mask. If you don't know what is the layer mask concept of how it works inside Blender, I highly recommend you to check my texture tutorials about this. And I'm gonna link this to the corner. If I'm holding Control Shift and click, you will see this is the mask, how it works. It's a gradient, it generally fade off in the other side of the edge. I wanna make sure the image PNG file looks darker towards the bottle, okay? So that's how it works. Without this gradient texture, it looks like this, Isn't which is not too bad, but having this is a gradient fade in really well. Basically, the PNG image texture can use as a props which is really a nice thing for me. Uh, I know you can do this type of thing inside of Photoshop, but think about it. Since you already designed the lighting, everything, and having these props put it in, it looks so much better. And you can even add in depth of view on your focus, so everything's just easily naturally blurred. Uh, you don't have to go to the Photoshop to getting a Gaussian blur and uh, do that. That's a lot of work. So. I'm just trying to make things a little bit easier for you guys. And this is the secret number two when you're using the PNG image texture as a props. All right, here is the third trick that I want to show you how to use the PNG file. As you can see here, we have a lot of particles and uh, things around floating in the air. And uh, if you ever try to learn geometry node, which is a great feature inside Blender, it takes forever for me. I just feels like there's a better way, there's an easier way. So what I found accidentally is to think about using a PNG file to creating a mesh and to having the particles sitting on the mesh. If we can render out an environment without really showing the texture of this mesh, that would be perfect, right? Just exactly out of what I'm showing you here. So there's what I've done. So basically this is just a mesh if I'm holding a tab key. You can see here there's any shape that you want you can reshape the 
the where's the particle wanted to distribute you can just utilizing this so i have two side one it is plain and the other one is the, the the other shape so this is very easy to create and there's so many particle system tutorials to show you how to do these things i'm not go over in here so what i have done here for the texture wise if i click this body and you can see here this is very simple principle bsdf and i just hook a png file of nothing and the alpha channel to the alpha channel so in that way when you do any renders and you wouldn't see anything over here which is perfect it's just working like the labels however when you render there's just nothing flowing in here it doesn't interact with the lighting everything it's just like it never exists and the problem is how to creating this png file of nothing okay so let me show you how to do that in photoshop inside of photoshop this is a great example we just have done our cutout for our one of the prop and what you can do here you really need using an image in order to do this sort of thing if you actually getting a new image and doing a creating a new layer and uh, having an empty layer and the save as this the photoshop will not let you do so because it's absolutely empty which is true it doesn't make any sense and you can even try using other type of method to save as uh, for web legacy whatever it doesn't really let you do so unless there is a bug on the photoshop which is a good bug and you can just open a image that is existing okay it doesn't matter you have a layer mask or not and you can just kind of crop it and uh, usually for image texture to square format and you don't have to do so but i'm just doing this to show you how to do this and then what you can do here you just need adding an empty layer and then that's it now you can actually save this as absolutely empty layer so you can go here and export and save as and then you have making sure you, you select the png 24 and hit save it doesn't really matter for the resolution it's not going to show you anything inside blender if we'll go back to the blender we can actually select that now so go to the file you got here you see there's nothing and although when i doing crop i didn't crop the entire uh, pixel so it still remained the shape of that but it doesn't really matter so you can just select that nothing and then hit open image so it works like this it's perfectly working and making sure when you do that empty layers you need to start with the actual image to start with and deleting everything else and to save that this is really good tricks for people who are really not knowing how to do the geometry nodes and i'm definitely one of them so this is kind of a way that i figure out it works really good but of course i'm going to continue learning geometry nodes and uh, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do that in the animation and same thing you can really animating the this mesh you can hit r y it can rotate that you can animate that in this mesh as well but you can definitely do some cool stuff with this this is just one thing i discovered accidentally and then while testing the png image texture this is everything I want to show you in this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested to play with this file and you can just simply be my Patreon or you can purchase this file separately on my Gumroad page. And of course, if you really want to advance your product rendering skills inside of Blender, you can certainly enroll my pro level courses on my Gumroad page as well. The link is in the description. And thank you for 10K subscribers and all your support for this channel. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.